discussion on swindling and other deceits. First one is your article 315 or your swindling or your estafa. There are generally there are two ways to commit estafa. Okay, it can be estafa with abuse of confidence or estafa by means of deceit. As to estafa with abuse of confidence or the so-called estafa with unfaithfulness. Okay, pareho lang yun. First one is yung offender dapat meron siyang onerous obligation to deliver something of value. Number two, dapat he alters its substance, quantity or quality. Number three, dapat merong damage, dapat merong prejudice doon sa ibang tao. Okay, when we say onerous obligation, okay, in estafa, by altering the substance, yung quality or yung quantity of anything of value, okay, here, the offender, the offender has the obligation to deliver such thing, okay, the delivery, the delivery of anything of value must be by virtue of an onerous obligation to do so. So, ang ibig sabihin niyan, kung yung bagay na na-deliver is hindi siya fully or partially paid for, okay, when it was received by the other party, yung taong nag-de-deliver or, or yung the person making the delivery, hindi po siya liable sa estafa. Okay? Kahit na meron pang alteration doon sa substance, doon sa quantity or yung quality nung bagay. Bakit? Dahil wala naman pong damage. Remember that there must be a damage or prejudice on the part of the other person. Another example Okay, altering yung substance. May it be quality or yung quantity of the thing to be delivered. Okay, example is the case of people versus manansala. Here, where a person, let's just say si Pedro, example po si Pedro, nagbenta siya ng 1,000 tins on the assurance that they contained opium. Okay. Lata. 1,000 daw na lata ang ibinenta ni Petro. Tapos, ang sabi niya, ang laman ng lata ay opium. Okay. Pero, ang totoo niyan, meron lamang 16. Okay. 16 na lata na may lamang opium. Tapos, yung ibang lata naman na, ang laman nito ay mga damo-damo. Here, the crime of estafa okay, was committed because there was an alteration of the substance, which is the opium, which he promised to deliver. Okay? Here, what was actually delivered was molasses. Okay, let's just say it's damo. Okay? So, that is as to the substance. Okay, altering the substance. Pa punta naman tayo sa altering the quantity. Okay, pag sinabing quantity is yung dami. Okay, example is the case given okay, in this situation. Si, sa case ng US versus Mendezona, 2 field 353. Here, yung akusado pledge to Compania de Tabacos 20,000 bales of hemp by declaring in an instrument that such number of bales was actually in existence. The accused knowing that he had only 12,000 bales in the warehouse. The accused nag 
promesa po siya na magde-deliver ng 20,000 na bales ng hemp. Okay? Pero, ang katotohanan is alam niyang 12,000 lang ang meron siya sa warehouse niya. Dito, yung manager ng kompanya de Tabacos, naniwala siya, nagtiwala siya doon sa mga salita ng akusado, nagtuloy sila sa isang kontrata at nagbigay ng bayad na 300,000 pesos. Sabi ng batas, liable ba yung akusado ng estafa by altering the quantity? The answer is yes. Opo. This is estafa by altering the quantity of the thing. The accused promise to deliver by virtue of an obligation to do so. Okay. Also, example is kung yung si Pedro. Okay. Nag-agree siya na magbenta ng 100 kavans ng palay. And na-receive niya na yung bayad ng 100 kavans ng palay. Ang dineliver niya lang ay 98 kavans. Okay? Is he also liable for estafa? The answer there is yes. Okay? Here, Pedro is liable for estafa by altering the quantity. Number, next one. You also have the altering the quality. Kalidad. Okay? Example. Si Alberto, pumayag siyang magbenta kay Brian ng first class na bigas. At nakareceive siya kay Brian nung bayad. Pero nung na-deliver na kay Brian yung yung first class ay yung yung agreed na first class rice okay it was found out na hindi pala ito yung first class rice kundi isang mababang kalidad na bigas is he liable is Alberto liable for estafa by altering the quality The answer that is yes because the damage consists is to the value of the rice. Lagi nyo pong tandaan na liable ang isang tao ng estafa kahit pa yung ide-deliver niya o yung subject ng delivery ay isang prohibited drugs. That is the case of people versus manansala. Sabi dito, okay, by the specific provision of Article 315, meron pong crime na estafa kahit pa, even if the thing to be delivered under the obligation to deliver it is not subject of lawful commerce. That is opium. Okay? So, kung ang ide-deliver ay shabu, marijuana, or any prohibited drugs, okay, you can still be liable for estafa. Next one. Punta naman tayo sa second paragraph o yung paragraph B ng Article 315. Okay? Nakalagay po doon. Basahin natin. Okay? By misappropriating or converting. Eh, EX. Sabihin ko na lang yung elements. Okay? There are four elements. Yung paragraph B. Tapos na tayo sa paragraph 1. Yung substance, quality, at saka yung quantity. Okay? Doon naman tayo sa paragraph B. Okay? Estafa with abuse of confidence under paragraph B. Number one element, that money, goods, or other personal property to be, re be received by offender in trust or on commission or for administration or under any other obligation 
involving the duty to make deliver of or to return the same. Number two, that there be misappropriation or conversion of such money or property by the offender or denial on his part of such receipt. Number three, that such misappropriation or conversion or denial is to the prejudice of another. And number four, that there is a demand made by the offended party to the offender. Lagi niyong tandaan, Okay? Sa estafa, dapat meron pong damage o kaya prejudice in any form. Okay? So, here, yung demand, yung last element. The fourth element is not necessary when there is an evidence of misappropriation of the goods by the defendant. Okay? Kasali po ba ang cheque sa uh, paragraph na to? Kasi ang nakalagay lang dito, ma'am, is money, goods, or other personal property. Kasali ba ang cheque? Okay. Sabi ng batas, check is included in the word money. Okay. Money, goods, or other personal property must be received by the offender. Tandaan nyo na yung pera, yung goods, o yung iba pang personal property ay natanggap ng offender. Okay? Kung si offender, he took the personal property, he took the, eh, kinuha niya yung pera, kinuha niya yung goods, pero walang consent yung owner. Okay? Is there a staff, ha? The answer is the answer is no. Okay? If he took the pro the property without the consent of the owner, the crime committed is theft, not estafa. Okay? Lagi rin nating tandaan na nung ni receive nung offender yung money, yung goods at yung personal property He receive such, okay, interest or commission or administration or any other obligation to make delivery or return the same. So, si, let's just say si Pedro. Si Pedro nakatanggap ng pera. At ang obligasyon niya ay mag-deliver ng 100 kavans ng rice. Okay? Here, the money was received by Pedro in trust, okay? in commission, or administration, or any other obligation. Okay? And what kind of obligation is that? It can be through delivery or return of the same. Example. Okay? Example ng estafa kung saan yung offender ay nakatanggap ng isang bagay in trust on commission or for administration. Example is the case of people versus Carulas Dulasan. Okay? In this case, the accused were tenants of the complaining witness. Okay? Mga te tenant yung akusado. Okay? They receive from the sale of abak abaka harvested by them a sum of money, including one half which belonged to the landlord under the tenancy agreement. So, si yung akusado daw po ay naka tanggap ng bayad mula sa tinanim nilang abaka. Yung kalahati ng natanggap nilang pera ay pagmamayari ng landlord. In this situation, yung akusado meron po silang obligasyon to deliver yung kalahating bayad kasi nga ito ay pera ng landlord. Pero, 
okay? Ang nangyari, instead na ibigay nila sa landlord, ay ginamit po nila yung pera. Okay? Hindi lang nila ginamit, kundi ayaw pa nilang ipang i- ibigay. Okay? Kasi pwede mo namang palitan kasi pera naman yan. Pero dito sa case na to, ayaw nilang ibigay yung bayad. Okay? In this situation, the thing must receive interest. So, the accused is liable for estafa. Punta naman tayo yung, kung yung bagay na tinang, natanggap ay commission. Okay? Yung kanina is trust. Ngayon naman is commission. Okay. Example. Okay. Example po is the case of U.S. versus Figueroa, 22 fil 270. In this situation, as regards the failure of A to pay to the treasurer, the value of 0.25 pesos representing the cost of the part. So, pansin ninyo, is 0.25 cents. Ma, ano to? Matagal na tong kaso na to. Let's just say, mahal, malaking amount na siguro yun ngayon. Okay? So, yung 25 cents na to, okay, hindi po, okay, the failure of A to pay the treasurer the 25 cents representing the cost of the perk received from C. Wala daw pong estafa. Bakit? Kasi ang sabi ng batas, money, goods, or any per other personal property receive under the obligation to deliver the same. In this situation, okay, the thing received must be the same to be delivered and not the other. Dito sa situation ng US versus Figueroa, ang nangyari po kasi, si A, hindi niya na-receive yung pera from C. Okay? A did not receive any money from C to be delivered to the treasurer. What A received from C was a kilo of pork or karne. Another example. Okay? sa administration naman tayo. Okay? This is the case of People versus Benitez. An administrator, okay, if the administrator appointed by the court, let's just say si Alberto, administrator, okay, appointed by the court to administer the estate of a deceased person. Let's just say si Pedro na matay. Okay? Alberto received money or personal property in his capacity as the administrator. Okay? He misappropriated the same for his personal benefit. He is liable for estafa. So, example, si Alberto administrator kasi inappoint siya na na administrator ng korte. As the administrator, ang dapat na gawin ni Alberto is to settle the estate of Pedro. Okay? Dapat uh, ini-inventory niya yung mga pagmamayari ni Pedro. Pero ang ginawa ni Alberto is ginamit niya yung pera. Pinambili niya ng kotse, ng uh, pinang sugal niya, okay, pinang kain niya, in any, anything for his personal benefit, okay, that is misappropriation. So, he is liable for estafa. Ano ang pinagkaiba ng estafa sa malversation? Okay? Ang estafa at malversation, okay, yung offenders ng estafa at malversation, yung offenders are entrusted with funds. Okay, pareho na na-entrust sila. Pareho ring continuing offense ito. Pero, sa estafa, yung property 
are always private. Pero sa malversation, they are usually public funds or property. Isa pa, is estafa, the offender is a private individual or even a public officer but he is not accountable for such public funds. Okay? Sa isang malversation, the offender is usually the public officer who is accountable for public funds or property. Okay? So, another one, estafa with abuse of confidence. Here, the crime is committed by misappropriating, converting, or denying having received money, goods, or other personal property. Pero sa malversation, the crime is committed by misappropriating, taking, or appropriating, taking, or misappropriating, or consenting, or through abandonment or negligence, permitting any other person to take the public funds or property. Next one, okay? Estafa by taking undue ad advantage of the signature in blank. Okay, there are four elements. Number one, the the paper with the signature of the offended party be in blank. Number two, that the offended party should have delivered it to the offender. Number three, that the signature, no offended party. A document is written by the offender without authority to do so. Number four, that the document so written creates a liability of or causes damage to the offended party or any third person. Example, si Anna may iniwan siya kay Ben na isang blankong papel na merong signature si Ana with a request okay, na nagre-request siya to make a receipt for future payment to be made by a debtor Be, pero si, si Ben ang ginawa niya okay, is He wrote their own a veil for some merchandise in the name of Anna. So si Ben, okay, ginamit niya yung merchandise for his personal benefit. The veil is written. Okay? The veil so written, nagkaroon or nagcreate ng liability against Anna. Okay? and would cause damage to Anna because the owner of the merchandise could make Anna pay for the value of the merchandise delivered to Ben by reason of such veil. Okay? Next one is estafa by means of deceit. Okay? Mahaba po ang estafa. Okay? There are four elements. Number one, there is or there must be false pretense, fraudulent act or fraudulent means. Number two, that such false pretense, fraudulent act or fraudulent means must be made or executed before or simultaneously with the commission of the fraud. Number three, that the offense, the offended party must have relied on the false pretense false or the fraudulent act or the fraudulent means so he was induced to part with his money or property because of the false pretense fraudulent act or fraudulent means number four that as a result of the offended party suffered damage okay 
Lagi nyo pong tandaan na walang, ano ba ang deceit? Deceit is panluloko. Okay? Panlilin lang. Okay? Lagi nyo pong daan, tandaan na wala pong deceit kung yung complainant, okay, yung victim. Okay? There is no deceit if yung complainant po ay aware of the fictitious nature of the pretense. So, example is the case of people versus conception. Ano bang nangyari dito? Okay. Here, the complainant is alam niya na fictitious yung nature ng pretense. Okay. So, walang estafa na nangyari. Here, it was alleged that the money of which the bank was defrauded was obtained by false representation on the part of the accused Grisologo na siya daw ang may-ari nung tobacco covered by Kedans. But the manager of the bank who let the money out alam niya na yung tobacco was not, not existent. So in this situation, the accused cannot be convicted of estafa by means of deceit. Next one. Lagi nyong tandaan na there are three ways of committing estafa under Article 315, Number 2, Paragraph A. Okay? There are three ways. Ano yun? Number 1, using a fictitious name. Number 2, okay, by falsely pretending to possess power, influence, qualification, property, credit, agency, business, or imaginary transaction. Or number three, by means of other similar deceits. Punta tayo sa fictitious name. Okay? Estafa by fictitious name. Anong ibig sabihin ng fictitious name? Okay? Fake yung name niya. Okay? Kumagamit ng hindi totoong pangalan. Okay? There is use of fictitious name kung yung tao gumamit ng pangalan na hindi niya tunay na pangalan. Example, my real name is Hyvie Marley Crisa Bakudi Saino Ballad. Okay? When I use, when in a transaction of sale, I use the name of Maria de la Cruz Santos. Then, I can be sued for estafa by using fictitious name. Okay? Another example. When a person found a pawn shop ticket in the name of another. Okay? Si Pedro. Nakahanap daw ng pawn shop ticket sa pangalan ni Mario. At ginamit ni Pedro yung pangalan ni Mario para ma-redeem yung alahas. Okay? He, is, he committed estafa by using a fictitious name. Okay? Another one is the case of U.S. versus De Los Reyes. This one naman is estafa by falsely pretending to possess power. Okay, example. Si, let's just say si Arnold. Okay? Si Arnold, gusto niyang, um, he wanted to get a carabao. Okay? Valued at 50,000 pesos from Ben. Okay? So, gustong makakuha ni Arnold ng carabao worth 50,000 kay Ben. Okay? Si Ben, isa pong ignoranteng, ah, uh, tao. So, by means of piece of paper which Arnold delivered to Ben, okay, si Arnold, he induced Ben to accept it as payment of his carabao. Okay? Upon Arnold's representation and guarantee na yung papel na yun, okay, 
is an equivalent of silver money okay so as long as okay provided that si Ben would offer prayers for the success of the enterprise so nadala si Ben sa mga salita ni Arnold by reason of that misrepresentation si Ben naman ignorante siya he delivered the carabao to Arnold okay and accept the piece of paper with na walang silbi is Arnold liable for estafa the answer that is yes that is the case of US versus De Los Reyes okay here the accused is guilty of estafa by falsely pretending that the worthless piece of paper possess power a statement which induced Ben to part with his carabao okay. example naman ng estafa by falsely pretending to possess influence okay. si si akusado okay. yung akusado Okay. If the accused represented to the offended party isang inchik that sabi ni, let's just say yung akusado ay si Pedro. Okay. Yung inchik ay si 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 Jackie. Okay. Si Pedro represented niya si si Jackie isang inchik na sabi niya, meron daw siyang influence sa Malacanang, sa Bureau of Immigration, Bureau of Customs, sa DFA. Okay, sabi ni Pedro, malakas ako dyan, kilala ako dyan. Pero sa ang katotohanan is wala naman siyang influence. Di nga siya kilala ng mga tao dun. Okay, di nga siya kilala ng kahit sinong man sa kahit anong opisina. Here, okay, said representation was made by him for the purpose of inducing Jackie Chan who has the interest to enter he is or interested in the entry of his family for permanent residence in the Philippines so ang nangyari si Jackie gusto niya kasing dalhin yung pamilya dito sa Pilipinas nagbigay siya ng pera kay Pedro 1 million okay dahil ito daw ay para sa mga serbisyo ni ni Pedro okay that is an example of estafa by falsely pretending to possess influence